So let's talk about accounting. What is it and how it works? Accounting is the recording, the measurement, and the interpretation of financial information. The Financial Accounting Standards Board, or FASB, has been setting principles and standards since 1973. Its mission is to establish and improve the standards of financial accounting and reporting. Accounting scandals happen when accounting firms and businesses fail to abide by generally accepted accounting principles, or GAAP. The federal government has taken a greater role in making rules and requirements and policies for accounting and businesses through the Extra Securities and Exchange Commission, which, modify, which uh, regulates the public disclosure of information. So it's the information that's disclo disclosed publicly. That's the SEC, the S S Securities and Exchange Commission. Public, accounting, public Company Accounting Oversight Board is the part of the SEC that does this. To better understand the importance of accounting, we'll first understand, we must first understand who prepares accounting information and how it is used. Many of the functions of accounting are carried out by the public or by private account, or excuse me, by public or private accountants. These are individuals and businesses that, in, that companies that can be can hire. Uh, they're called certified public accountants. So they learn and are certified in the proper use of accounting procedures. An individual who has been state certified to provide accounting services ranging from the preparation of, of of financial records to the filing of tax returns and forms to various and various aspects of the complex audits of corporate financial records. These are certified public accountants. Most of the public accountants are self-employed or members of large public accounting firms. Uh, these are generally uh, partnerships. Accounting, the reason there's so much emphasis on this is that it's important that people understand uh, what accounting records are telling you about the health of the business. This way one can compare various businesses with each other and make clear and, and, and uh, informed uh, financial decisions. This allows resources to be allocated properly among various companies based upon their performance using the same language and the same accounting practices. It's very important this transparency allows efficient and effective allocation of resources and people's understanding of information from the companies in a common and transparent manner. Here are some of the top accounting firms. We have PricewaterhouseCoopers, Ernst & Young, Deloitte. These are um, various ones of uh, the larger accounting firms you see that are listed here. Um, all of those have very, uh, very strong reputations. They are independent. These LLPs are limited liability partnerships, uh, which you might recall we talked about earlier in one of the modules where we talked about structures. Um, Many CPAs work for these various accounting firms. After the accounting scandals of Enron and WorldCom, which occurred in the early 2000s, Congress passed what's called the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, which required firms to be more rigorous in their accounting and reporting practices. It also made it important that financial executives sign off on their financial reports. It made accounting firms separate their consulting businesses and their auditing businesses, and it also punished corporate executives with potential jail sentences for inaccurate or misleading or illegal accounting statements. Prior to that, companies would have these uh, these accounting firms would have large consulting contracts with large companies, and in, at times this would cause them to um, to have uh, questionable conflicts of interest or these uh, agency problems. They don't want to affect their consulting contracts by uh, issuing a bad accounting report, so that had to be separated. Deconning housing prices during that time exposed some questionable practices by banks and mortgage companies. So only five years after the passage of Sarbanes-Axley, the world experienced the financial crisis in 2008. Congress passed the Dodd-Frank Act in 2010 to strengthen the oversight of financial institutions, giving the Federal Reserve Board the task of implementing the legislation. 
This legislation limits the types of assets commercial banks can buy, the amounts of capital they must maintain on their balance sheets, and the use, and we'll talk about those later, and the use of derivative instruments, which were higher risk uh, financial instruments like options, futures, and structured um, investment products. In other words, trying to simplify how banks maintain their own asset portfolio to make sure there was enough on reserve if people needed to understand, needed access to funds uh, at some you know, some sort of a crisis situation. Um, corporate fraud costs an estimated 3.7 trillion dollars annually. So it's really, as you can see, there's a cost even with all of this um, transparent information and independent auditing going on. Imagine uh, how difficult it would be to figure out what was happening in organizations and companies as you were spending money if it wasn't for some of these, uh, these regulations. Different entities have different standards uh, for accounting methods. For example, public and private businesses follow generally accepted accounting principles, which is called GAAP. GAAP is generally used in the United States as a standard for accounting. These principles are established by FASB, or the Financial Accounting Standards Board. Uh, local government entities have different sets of accounting standards at times. Um, these could be uh, set by the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, or the GASB. G -I, GASB. So that's what um, different ways to be thinking about how these various uh, organizations or how these these regulations of what you're supposed to see it's like understanding how the language is supposed to be done and then it's up to the uh, organizations and these outside auditors to sort of enforce those quote grammar type of uh, of activities um, the federal government follows yet another set of standards this is the uh, federal accounting standards advisory board this, uh, further, there's sets of standards by international companies called the International Financial Reporting Standards, the IFRS uh, reporting standards. So there's standards that people want to, you have to, one of the reasons that certification and accounting uh, takes uh, you know, lots of uh, training and testing and the like is because there are these various boards that are all in place to try and make it so that one person from outside a company can understand what's going on in that company and they can also understand what's going on in a different company, maybe even a different country, and then compare those to decide how to allocate their own assets and their own resources from an investment perspective. All of these various things going on. Uh, one more important aspect of accounting is forensic accounting. There's a growing uh, interest in this type of accounting, which um, is, uh, is sort of fit for legal review. In, in other words, it allows you to understand what's going on after the fact in many cases. It involves analyzing financial documents in search of fraudulent entities or financial misconduct uh, for purposes of prosecution. This functions as much like detectives as accountants. Forensic accountants have been used since the 1930s in the wake of accounting scandals. Of the early 2000s, they were important players. Many auditing, many auditing firms are rapidly adding or expanding forensic, forensic or fraud detection services. Additionally, many forensic accountants root out evidence of cooked books for federal agencies like the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Internal Revenue Service. These are books that have entries in them that try to create the impression that something good is happening when perhaps something bad is actually happening, bad in the sense of uh, lower costs or the wrong kind of write-offs or trying to hide certain transactions and the like. The Association of Certified Fraud Examiners uh, certifies accountants in uh, as uh, certified as these, this type of accountant and there's more than 70,000 members like that currently. So let's talk about the, um, the accountants public versus private. Private accountants uh, are individuals who are employed by large corporations or governments. They work within the company um, to do their financial statements and make all that happen. It's uh, it's good to have a CPA, but some in some roles within organizations, a CPA is not required. They often have titles like controller or tax accountant or internal auditor. 
Uh, private accountants are deeply involved with many of the most important financial decisions of the organization for which they work. Uh, private accountants can be CPAs and may become certified management accountants or CMAs as well. Um, this, there's certain uh, passing of rig rigorous examinations uh, by the Institution of Management Accountants. Um, internal or private accountants don't necessarily have to be CPAs or CMAs, but generally it's a good career move to be in that role, and many of the private accountants are hired from public accounting firms. Um, you also have uh, public accountants, which are the ones that are operating within the big firms that I described that are independent entities that produce audited financial statements for public companies. Those are public accountants. The question that comes up quite often is the difference between accounting and bookkeeping. Um, account, bookkeeping is the, uh, the process of actually recording entries. It's generally considered to be limited to the routine activities of taking uh, transactions and recording them in the books. Um, it's kind of narrow and a mechanical type of accounting uh, or mer of, 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 of record keeping. Um, it doesn't require as much training as accountants because accountants have to understand these various uh, ways of regulations of how the, you're supposed to be implementing these transactions. Uh, they're also bookkeepers also know that and it's a uh, it's a good skill. Uh, but accountants are the ones responsible for also analyzing the financial statements to understand how well an organization is doing, which we'll talk about in some going forward um, uh, uh, or, or lectures in this module. Uh, bookkeepers are also responsible for obtaining and recording the information that accountants require. For example, going through invoices or looking on the computer systems and making sure all the transactions are recorded appropriately. Accountants usually complete coursework beyond the basic four or five year college degree, uh, additional work that helps prepare them to get their uh, certified uh, public accountant, uh, their public, uh, CPA certifications and the like, or CMA certifications. Um, in the next lecture, we'll talk about using accounting information and how organizations make use of it. We'll catch up on that one in the next lecture.